And here we are back at it again, ladies and gentlemen. More HEC China coming in hot for you. And as you can see, the teams in the background is going to be a pretty good game in its own way and respect, right? With A Team facing off RPG. And uh, we talked a lot about teams trying to get that fifth place locked in so they don't have to go back to the Crucible. Uh, these two teams are in desperate need of more points to achieve exactly that, Tetcher. Absolutely. RPG, if they win a 2 0, they're tied with Team Nut and the K Team KT. So RPG, after their great performance versus BTG earlier today, would love a 2 0. But the A Team, they also started getting better and better. However, they have had a recent substitution recently with Uncle G being banned from league play for the rest of the year due to an altercation at the studio. I was going to ask, what was the official term? Uh, altercation, I think, is... Uh... There was an altercation yeah. at the studio, which uh, I believe broke the player safety guidelines. Exactly. So a little bit what of a... What is up with my mic? A little bit of a ruckus going on. Yeah, you have a, an additional crack crackle in there, but... One second. Nothing... Uh... Nothing super scary. He <laughs> did better. Uh, let me see. Say something real quick. Let's do a test, mic test, check. One, two, three. Test, test, mic check. One, two, three. I think it sounds much better now. There we go. Cool. I just left the call and rejoined. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fixed. Either way, let's have a look at the A team. Yeah, the A team, man. It's a team that qualified to the pro division of HCC China for the first time ever, featuring some of the, or one, uh, one of the former players. Uh, off Team Soa until said incident happened and he was replaced by a former KT player, Kaitu, who's now the main tank for the team and who looked, you know, mind you, pretty, pretty good, actually, for the most part. Definitely not a, uh, what should I call it? Not a weak link by any means. Yeah. However, now with the upgraded, updated graphic, Loctar has returned for yes, RPG. And via the games earlier today, they looked real good. That they did. I mean, it really is a very respectable achievement to take a map of Beyond the Game with all the individual class they have. So RPG, man, look, look at the faces. They're much happier than before as well. You can really see how these recent successes, you know, beating Team Nut 2-0, having a 1-1 one, one yeah. now versus BTG, how it lifted their spirits and really puts them in a good mood. And that's exactly what they need to beat a straight-up contender like the A-Team. As we see, the differences aren't that huge, but RPG have been, both of these teams have been on a bit of an upward slope, which is nice to mm -hmm. see, but RPGs has been a little bit quicker, but not by much. As we are heading to what map? The Sky Temple, Braxis, Dragon, Volskaya, and Cursed are the other maps left available for the next pick. Mm -hmm. As once again, the map picks and bans from the first rotation, as all these teams play each other twice, are kept for the second rotation. This is why some of the maps were already grayed out. Exactly. So all the maps that were picked in the first match of the double round robin system are automatically locked and grayed, so you can't use them anymore, which leads to more map diversity, which is something that all of us want to see. Exactly. So in theory, come next week, China, more maps, more bans, more everything, <laughs> especially more team fights. As we see Diablo as the starting ban for RPG, a team is running with Genji, which is a smart move. Deny that away from Loctar, yeah. but it is going to at least allow MJ onto that Mafuri. Exactly. Uh, a tiny little detail that we forgot to mention, by the way, talking about the playoffs and, you know, the, the further advancement of this season. The playoff matches will be best of five, so that one will remind us a little more to the other HCC regions like Korea and, A and, uh, and Europe, right? So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool for the teams as well to get used to the best of five format. They will desperately need that experience for the Eastern Clash uh, we, because we're probably going to have longer series there as well after the group phase. Yeah. Someone bringing up an excellent point here where um, in the fact that we already have players on the A-team called Jaina and Stukov. How long until they start naming themselves after maps? Like mm. playing on Cursed Hollow, it's <laughs> Cursed Hollow. <laughs> Wait, uh, so it probably uh, it probably violates the Battle.net character limit, right? Is there a short map that, that fits into one Braxis. name? You could short You can name cursed, yourself Braxis, Braxis yeah. Powers. I would like it. Dragon. Tomb, yeah. It's kind of cool. DK Knight. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, that, that's, that's Dragon Knight Knight. Thanks, Brain. Uh, Call yourself <laughs> Protector on Volskaya and then Protector and the Protector. Ooh, that's a good one. 
Or Punisher. Punisher's just a cool player. Oh, that's a cool, that's a cool nickname, one. man. <laughs> is there any pro but, player in uh, in any Blizzard title that is named Punisher? I don't believe so. I don't, not that I know of. What, like, while we uh, th let's go very quickly off topic before we jump back in. What, what, what do you think is the most cool player name we currently have? Out of all the HCC pros? All the HCC pros. Ooh, that's a hard one, to be honest. Quite honestly, do you have a favorite already? Because that question sounded no, very I'm determined. No, I'm also thinking. I'm also thinking. You know what? I'm going to say nobody has really caught my attention yet because nobody's named Varian yet. Okay. I am. I, I do. I have figured out a favorite. Um, and I think the most current coolest name that we have in all of the leagues is Last Hope. Last Hope? The new fanatic guy? Yes. Yeah. Mm. You know what? It used to be Wang, actually, to be honest, for RPG. Yeah. Because Wang, you know, was one of those names that's short, nice, and quick, and it had perfect synergy with the chicken in his team. All right. So let's jump back in to the draft, and that is going to be a Falstad picking another hero that RPG could have potentially been leaning on here. But they already have gone for a Tyrael Junkrat style, which is very different to what we've seen them playing earlier. So RPG mixing it up a bit. Cool to see. But the A-team... Their draft looks real strong. Falstad yeah. does add extra slows for the Phoenix, and they still get that solo laner in the form of Urel. Honestly, though, I think it's the second showing of uh, Turiel. And in the, fir the first time we saw it on BOE earlier when RPG played BTG, I think it did a lot of work, and probably more work it than did. we gave it credit for. Not only with good sanctifications can you stay in the game quite long, but also Turiel is very resilient, much more resilient than many people think he can be with the shields, with the movement speed as well. So I kind of dig it. Let's see what they end up picking alongside with it, because right now, something that RPG is definitely lacking, in my opinion, is hard lockdown in CC. They already have Mafia and Roots, Junkrat, consistent disruption CC as opposed to hard CCs. Yeah, a little bit of hard CC would be absolutely wonderful yeah. here. Completely agree with you. So what are they going to go with it? That's not hard CC at all. Neither is that. So they're going to go with the standard just skirmishing uh, team fight style as opposed to a dive team fight style, I would call it. Wow. Okay, Leoric and Tracer. Now, that is definitely not what I thought they would close their draft with. Uh, I mean, the Entomb can work as a hard lockdown, right? <coughs> Sorry. No worries, man. Bless you. And let's see how much protection there is for the Tracer. So the Terrial Shields act like a substitute, maybe, for the Tacit or the Zarya. Malfrey yeah. is always good with her. And let's see how many targets there are currently for her to pick off. Phoenix is okay. Falset is a very good pickup target. And the support, depending on which one they go for, could, uh, could be another one. Hmm... I mean, you're against a Terriel. I wouldn't mind someone like a Stukov at least for silencing Terriel, but then you're at danger Uther of Tracer. Even. Uther might be the choice, actually. I think you might be right there, except for AoE damage from Junkrat. Mm. I'm feeling Rhaegar. Rhaegar with a good Ancestral, you can definitely do it. I mean, it could be a Bloodlust comp. Uh, <laughs> you could run oh. it all the time, Falstad. But no, we're going to stick with Deckard, which is Great Siege and has had interesting matchups against Tracer in the fact that if you get Tracer with no blinks, then you can really punish her. But that's so rare, and usually she just dives past the sleep and kills Deckard. Yeah. So it's a risky situation that's very reliant on Muradin and Yorel to protect Deckard Kane. Keep in mind, it's a rather open map as well, Sky Temple it is. So um, on a map like Towers of Doom, for example, it would be much harder for the Tracer to actually get to the back lane because she would literally have to circumvent all the heroes, just pass, the, pass by right through them. Whereas in Sky Temple, she can actually flank them from behind or from the sides much more freely, right? So Decker Kane might be in even more trouble than he would have been in other maps. Um, if I look at those two drafts and I compare them to one another, I think RPG has a very exotic one, a very wild one, but that's where they thrive. Just remember that Illidan comp they ran Nobody thought Illidan yeah. would work, right? But they made it work. And I think they can do the same thing again with Chicken on that Tracer. My concern is I don't think it's Chicken on the Tracer. I think it's Chicken on the Auric. You think so? Chicken always plays I mean, the Tracer, chicken, though. He, I guess, but who plays the Leoric? Do we have Saar on Leoric? Yeah, whenever can Chicken goes for that Tracer, Saar ends up going for that melee flex. Okay, um, let's. I'm going to check Saar and we're going to see. He, yeah, I think he actually played Leoric a uh, few, few days ago. 
You might be right. And it was okay. Let's have a look. Um, RPG. Because we made jokes about Sa and how he ended up dying in that previous game, so now he's in Lurex, so at least he's always oh, going to get did, trade value. Didn't we? <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're definitely right on that. And search by Alphabet as we are loading into the first game of the series. We are right. It, they do have one game on Leoric with Sa and 100% win rate with it. Let's see if they can keep that up. But on the left-hand side, looking to get some points for themselves, it is the A-Team. And playing for them, it is Jaina on Falstad, Olele on the Phoenix, Bruiser on the Yorel, Stukov on Deckard Kane, and Kaitu playing the Murad. Facing them for the second time on that day is RPG playing for the second time with Chicken on that Tracer. MJ is playing the support, Malfurion. Leoric played indeed by Saw. C is going on the Terriel and Loctar on that Drunkard. And ladies and gentlemen, if my memory doesn't cheat on me, I think it is indeed the first time we see Loctar on that Junkrat. So he's uh, shifting away from those hyper mobile carries like a Genji, for example, and he's also not playing a traditional mage like let's say the Jaina or the Li Ming. So instead he's going for that Junker mayhem factor. Let's see how well he can do exactly I mean, that. Junkrat's pretty mobile, especially once he you kind get Ripper Rare. Yeah. But we are going for the bounce damage. I don't even know what this one's called. It's the one we see rarest here. As we see the, it is basically if you bounce it off a bit of terrain, which is pretty difficult on this map. The lanes are pretty wide, great on the boss though. Then you do extra damage on your uh, on your standard grenades. All right, there we go. So the more bouncy bounces you get, the more damage they will deal. Now, you real? <laughs> is it called bouncy bouncy? I don't know. I'm checking now because now you're making me think it is. <laughs> Could definitely be a, a, a fit choice for a Junkrat talent name, that's for sure. Uh, it is Bouncy Bouncy! Oh, Are you done, kidding Kendrick. me? You got it! I didn't even know <laughs> that! Well, neither did I, but you got it! You, you, you unconsciously worked it out because you're a genius. So Mini Wave's already pushed up a little bit, a little bit of XP denied to Kaiju there, but he's in range to grab the rest. All Taking right. extra tower damage though, I don't know why he didn't demount and at least help clear that for a boost yeah. tower damage. I'm really curious to see that duel here in the top lane as well. Good drain, hope you're landed perfectly onto Bruiser. So Leoric should probably trade evenly for the most part, you know, with uh, the drain hope, as long as that one connects, of course. The moment it misses, uh, then of course, the Urel is gonna heavily, heavily, heavily bully uh, the Leoric out of lane. So mercenary camps have been taken as well. Siege Giants reign supreme though in favor of the A team. The one by RPG had already been taken out. Uh, the Bruiser camps have been largely ignored up to this point both teams favoring the team fighting the early brawling a little bit this is also by the way we have just done the research junkrat uh locked our second junkrat game oh, but is it lose the first one hmm. yeah this phase as well or was it earlier sometime all time wow okay so let's see if he so can uh, redeem his own personal record there and uh, make it a one one gonna have to see as Tracer, once again, we're seeing a uh, chicken go for the build he likes to do, and also taking a leaf out of a Lufal's book, going for that untouchable. I've always had doubts with chicken doing this because he has been one known to die sometimes. Mm. But if you believe in yourself, then nothing could stand in your way except death. But hopefully, you can avoid that if you believe in yourself. It's very good that Malthea is not in this game, so death already much more easily or much less likely to face let's put it this way uh in the meantime we see both mercenaries and the top lane both bruiser camps being unleashed and unlocked and simply due to the timing right and due to the way that a team is defending this their mercenaries are gonna get a little more value in there and as long as that wizard in particular remains active those grenades by drunkard are not gonna be as efficient when it comes to dealing with that Temples are split up to this point. Tyrael holding the middle, Irel holding the top one. Look at all the mayhem with that grenade, actually knocking one of the mercs into fort range. Quite cute. And I think Loctar slowly but eventually will be able to defend this. Yep, it's very we will help him burn this down, but this does mean the shots from top are all going onto that top four, which is the preferable one because it is where a bruiser camp is. So this is the lane that you really do want to prefer, but obviously any shots are good shots. All the buildings have to go down eventually. So as such, mid is okay in terms of trading that out as RPG do gain all the shots from that. Here we go. The slow goes through onto 
the uh, Stuka here playing Decker Kane. Tracer helping as well, but focusing the wrong target, unfortunately. I think Chicken might have misclicked onto uh, the Irel here Ooh. because Stuka was <laughs> largely ignored, but C is making it out in the nick of time. Very nice. C escapes by the skin of his teeth. But right now, no kills acquired by either team, despite the best efforts of both teams, especially in that little fight there. Tracer holding level 7, finally going for bullet time. That's the usual one. I was wondering what other options she might be going yeah. for. Double Dwarf, by the way, once again deployed here for the A team. This is the second time we see the two dwarves side by side. First thing was actually used by RPG with that spectacular Hinterland yeah. Blast combo with the Illidan. So uh, let's see if they can make it work as well. Falson has actually come back into the Chinese meta quite a bit after we've been missing him for a long time, you know, because China and Korea, the two Asian re major regions, um, they've been relying on that here when everybody else in Europe and NA was saying, you know what, we don't like him anymore, we don't pick him. And then came the mid-season brawl, and then came the fact that Korean teams still looked mighty good, and uh, China actually found his way back onto the false set as well. Hopelessness once again coming in for Sar, exactly the same as he did last time yep. where he was on this hero. So he might in fact no go into that pure drain, pure drain build he went for with hardened bones and the crushing hope like he did last time, as opposed to the usual wraith walk build. Right now begins the drain onto Bruiser. Little bits of ticking damage over time. Jada takes a lot of damage. Uh -oh. the, the skeletal swing has been good for the slows. As Jada responds, back boss is awoken, but it looks like once again we'll see it disengage. Yeah, that was actually uh, really good for the A team here because the first team that attacks or damages the boss is going to draw the aggro. And the aggro is not going to shift until the team is actually moving out of range. So with RPG realizing, you know what, that boss is also going to hit us. It's also going to try to stomp us with the AoE stun. Let's actually abandon this ch this chase and uh, try to get the level 10 ourselves. Yeah. They might even put a little bit of pressure and a little bit of damage onto Kaitu and that Muradin here. No, Chicken nice needs to dog. be careful. There is actually an exception to that rule where the boss will attack the person who damaged uh, the team that damaged it. If you are not visible at the time that you damage the boss, then it will just go for the nearest target. That is correct. That is indeed correct. Or you vanish and then the enemy team keeps attacking it, right? Then it shifts aggro as well. So, exactly. Here we go. The mercenary is buying a little bit of extra time for RPG. Level 10 is your judgment getting That's locked judgment. in immediately by the Turiel, not even thinking twice about it. With the Entomb and with the Tracer and the Rip Tire, this could be some serious engaging right now. Didn't even try to hide it. Lyric no. died in the top lane by Falsa, who's trying to fly away. Fly away, Jada! Tracer can't teleport Ooh. far enough to catch him. Decker Kane finally picks his level 10, going for the same one. Listen, everything else looks pretty standard. But yeah, he didn't even try to hide it. He could have just not picked for a second. <laughs> yes. and like, been like, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. What do you think, enemy team? But no, just like, judgment. Now what? Uh, it's just got straight <laughs> in for it. But it's so far yet to use it. With the Yorick down, they don't seem to want to take a fight when they might be a member down. At least yeah. yet. That was actually a really good move by Jaina on the false side here, by the way, because sometimes you tend to panic global, right? You, you see the chicken, uh, you see the tracer mercilessly chasing you down, and you're just panic reacting, like flying to the nearest location that comes up. So Trace was actually expecting some kind of panic movement there and was uh, dashing behind. But uh, Jaina, of course, on that false side reacting just perfectly fine, keeping his calm and uh, flying all the way behind the tower line. So escaping to safety here but could have resulted in a kill there if he hadn't been as careful also phoenix riding a shark is very aesthetically pleasing as we do see chicken starting to burn down kai too but a little bit of extra pressure yeah. being added by the buridin material arriving it will force the disengage at least temporarily as bruiser comes in from behind see with a quick speed boost and tomb. as they begin to turn around in tomb on stukov especially stay a while and listen Barely gets two members. Junk Rat caught right on the outside. Saar was able to Wraith walk out of it, so he did not get caught. And once again, both teams disengage. One kill total, despite about yeah. nine team fights. And this is crazy. Like, especially RPG, they really, really need those kills for the untouchable uh, tr uh, talent of Tracer here at level four, right? The more kills she is a part of, the more her damage will stack and ramp up. The moment she dies, everything is going to be all for nothing. Now, 
We haven't seen a judgment yet. I think C is waiting for the golden opportunity here. Maybe getting it onto the Phoenix here. That's good. That's good. As they dive in, Riptide gets knocked back by the Urel trying to get it, and the Riptide does not land. It's Riptide is trying to burn down Olele. Gust is good. The bombs, not enough from Junkrat. And MJ being forced to back up as Bruiser is hung on the page. Saw dives deep. Oh, he's, he's buying more time. Walk out and C will get taken out. They bought more time with the Ardent Defender by Irel here. Now Chicken needs to be careful. He actually didn't have his ult ready. Big damage coming in from Ball Set as well. Oh my goodness. Almost lost all the stacks he never had. I yeah, I was about to say, I don't know why I panicked <laughs> for Untouchable. He's not got a kill yet. <laughs> I'm so used to that. Just like protect the stuff. Oh, you don't have any. Never mind. Yeah. If Tracer had had her ult there, though, in the Phoenix chase, I think that would have been a kill for sure. But it took them yeah. so long to arrive and get that damage done. And then came the Gust, and Phoenix went to safety. All right. Well, RPG, they're falling behind. They're a level and a bit behind right now. They are still taking shots from bot lane, though. They feel confident enough to do this. Everyone's alive. Everyone is in this area. They're actually going to try and kill Muradin here, but it's Muradin. Uh, is it enough judgment? Just wait a minute. Grayson got the kill. She's oh my gosh, she's still going. They're looking for a Lele. Sars dropped low, actually dies, but Big the tomb is there. Good concussion by. That's going to be a second kill going over to RPG. As is it though? Holy ground. Yeah, they've got it. I will be shocked <laughs> yes. if they don't get this. Thank God. As they are able to take that. The Falstad. Not sure why he was there. I think it was just because he was trying to follow yeah. up on that Gust play. And because he just flew away and has already used Gust and Holy Ground is available for Tyrael, that's a boss play. That was actually such a good scroll of ceiling by Decker Kane. I definitely thought everybody was safe until then. Um, but no, I mean, Tracer, she has outstanding chasing potential. The ult was on the spot there as well. The Gust was put out, uh, put down early. So as such now, with two members dead and Falstead flying to safety, that was the easiest boss RPG could have hoped for. And during all of this, though, they didn't really get the top temple, right? Irel was still holding that one. That means more structures going down for RPG, but with that boss and that bottom temple, they can make up a lot for it. Look at the body blocks! Phoenix, he can't even go through the holy ground there. Murden body blocking each other. That was almost a disaster for A-Team, but they focused the structure down rather than trying to get the kills. Well done by RPG. Kendrick, I'm getting bogged down by this level 13 pick for Junkrat, as it is bogged down, not Ripper Air. Mm. Instead of going for that extra mobility, it goes for that 60% slow to targets upon right. landing if they are hit by the Concussion Mine. Going for that lockdown style as Tracer also continues to go with the Leeching Rounds, what she has gone for every single game when Chicken has played her. Aggressive play by Jay now on the false dead, trying to get that Tyrael by any means necessary. Here comes the salvo and kills Aww. Tyrael after all. Tries to sell the fort, not happening, but at least he tried. He tried indeed, and you know, losing a Tyrael here at this point in time is acceptable. I mean, that one death is not going to mean that RPG will get a keep or anything, and the boss was already taken, so no punishment available for uh, the A-team immediately here, but if they lose Leoric, no, well juked there, my friend. Mr. Sa also used his Austin Renewal at level 1, keeping himself sustained even more. Now the, the camp being raided here. A spread volley for Junkrat. Oh. This is where that level one talent That's can bouncy. get some crazy value because you're going to get a lot of bounces. <laughs> yes. Asar backs up at least a little bit. And yeah. the camp is still stolen by the A team. Uh, RPG not willing to take the risk, at least at this point. Chicken, nice kiting. It drops a little bit of poke damage onto Bruiser, just being irritating right now. Material right. is back, trying to go for the flank here immediately. Holy Ground could be activated to zone them out or at least keep them at bay. Ooh, Sa needs to be careful. He missed the Drain Hope. Lands the Entomb, though. Every time, looking for Stukov. Leoric drops low, but is able to sneak away this time. It is the same build as last time, by the way, with the Hardened Bones. Chicken, once again, being focused. C, still yet to use Judgment, being very patient, at least for the moment. Here comes the Riptire. Tyrael is stunned. There's the Judgment, but the Riptire getting killed off. But C, in a really rough position, teleports into sleep. the sleep from the Deckard Kane. Ice blocked by Mafurian, giving himself a chance to turn this around. He gets out of there. Nicely done. Ooh. And RPG turned what could have been a disaster into what is a pretty decent keep defense. What a clutch defense here. I really want to highlight that. Beautifully done by RPG. After that four-man sleep went down by Decker Kane, I thought it was lights out for them. But they somehow managed to stay alive there all together and keep that top keep safe. Now, I also wanted to highlight that this one wizard from uh, the mercenary camp 
denied a lot of value from the um, Riptide, right? They unfortunately weren't able to kill it before, so with that spell protection aura that they had, the Riptide didn't hit nearly as hard as it could have otherwise. Also, by the way, we have a little bit of a Tyrael build adjustment, which is quite nice for that Judgment style. Level 4, we see Bound by Light, which means there's going to be a massive slow after the Eldruin's Might is getting used. So after the lockdown with the Judgment, you want to use that, boom, 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 and you continue to slow them, almost like an Arthas would with a Frozen Tempest. It's absolutely cool to see. He can give you some great lockdown capabilities. He does get knocked back by the uh, Temple Guardian for now. But Fiora can Falstad and not here. Difference is Falstad is global or close yep. to global. And exactly. we do see those shots coming in. Lyric needs to stay there as well because that keep and the defense line, they took some heavy, heavy damage from that previously ongoing push. And, uh, you know, RPG realized, you know what? Falstad could fly down, as Tetris said. Uh, we better back off for now. Tracer might even... Oh, they might even try to go for a cheeky play. Judgment is ready, Tracer. But they don't spot the Birdman in time. That almost would have worked out if Jaina hadn't been so careful about his movement. If they could have got the lockdown into, uh, for long enough to prevent that gust, it could have definitely been possible, like yeah. you said. But Vision is denied. So yeah, this is the Auric, but we talked about it last time we saw it. It is the same build that Saar yeah. went for before. Going for a Harden, going for Hopelessness for the extra range on his Drain Hope. The Harden Bones giving himself armor while he is draining, which makes him a little bit more sustainable. And then the Crushing Hope, the idea here being able to, uh, being able to drain Hope from further away for longer due to the fact that he is more sustainable. Basically, he entombs someone, he drains them for the full duration and gets the crit. This basically means if he can get Muradin or uh, if he can get Muradin or even Yarel after yeah. they have used their mobility tools, he can still get a pretty decent chunk of damage with that percentage. And if not, percentage damage is good on all heroes, including the Deckard Kane, who has been the primary target. Right, team fight has gone down here. C already in a lot of trouble. Doesn't really have the oh. city Gets killed mid-judgment resulting in a very, very sad death of yeah. Tyrael. The Riptor is good, though. Why did they group? Up the Phoenix. What was the purpose of that? Kaiju gets in two. Leoric Wraith walking to Bruiser. Gonna try and burst him down. Chicken actually this gets not over. Stay from Bruiser. Here comes the Archer Defender. Asar actually gets he uh, heals up Bruiser a little bit due to that Drain Hope. So one for one right now as they chase forward. Chicken looking for another kill, but not to be able to get one. They're going to get Decker Kane. The slow is good by Leoric. The Drain Hope as well. Tracer on the chase. Needs to be careful, though. We're seeing Yorel dropping low. Saar tanking through for the moment. Drain Hope. Not currently active and dodged by Kaitu, but those concussion, uh, those grenades coming in from Junkrat, that's going to be enough to force the disengage. Chicken, sustaining really well, making yeah. up for the lack of a second support with those leeching rounds. It's still so weird to see the talent because it feels really. I just, I'm not sure how I feel about it. it removes <laughs> yeah. so much wave clear, but overall, Chicken keeps making it work. It gives him a lot of extra self sustain, meaning that he doesn't require to be near Tyrael all the time. All right, so the temples are spread, and if I recall correctly, A-Team does have a slight advantage in terms of structures overall, especially in the top lane that had been wounded and damaged already in the past. They really need to make sure that they don't give the full temple duration over to A-Team, because that would mean the keep would fall 100%. Even Saw needs to be so careful. Like, he needs to arrive at his team's side in time, otherwise Irel is just going to hold this until the end of time. Riptire. Yeah, he needs to group up. He does group up. He's getting that 10 Damage. armor now. Riptire oh. lands. Judgment from Max Rage. Now Tyrael's alone, but in comes the grenade upgrade of bombs. The state, the buried alive hits no one. Sleep for the counter only hits Tyrael in the salvo. Very low Can value the there. Decker, is it Rage? He's got 45 armor currently, but oh. still taken out as the armor expires by Junkrat. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was Decker's game positioning after the stay a while and listen that he was still so close to RPG. And you know, Decker doesn't have any mobility tools either available for him. So he was completely exposed. And without the support, that is such a crippling, damaging blow to the stability and the roster of the A team right now. Still, they're trying to make something happen. They realize, you know what? At least one person by RPG is in that top lane holding the temple. So maybe we can make something happen in a four versus four. Oh, here goes the judgment engage and the cannonballs are raining down from Loctar. Those are some bouncy cannonballs oh, and they boy. do so much damage. Bog down not even being used here as they're looking for bruise. And now the there's the slow 40% oh. slow from that talent. They're going to get themselves a keep. And they might even move for core. 15 seconds for Deckard. Yeah. Phoenix is completely busy getting wrecked by the Buried Alive. Is Saar just going to prevent him from porting? Because that's the perfect play. If he can stop Olele from leaving and going back to base, then his team has the chance Another to go for the core. There's the judgment. To... Cameraman? Okay, well, they got the kill on Muradin <laughs> as they begin working down the core. 
The Angel of Justice here, the level 20 upgrade, reduces the cooldown of the Judgment by a large margin and also increases Phoenix the range from which C can use it. Yeah, we're just <laughs> locked down on the core because that one is definitely going to fall here. The onslaught of RPG is too real, too much to handle, and Leoric even gets the kill for good measure while he was chasing down the Phoenix to prevent him from teleporting home. So, wonderfully done by RPG. For the most part, it looked like they were behind significantly there, especially after that top push going down from the A-team. But in the end, Tetcher, that lockdown with the Judgment was golden. Yeah, game number one going over to RPG. The Judgments at the end, especially with that level 20 upgrade, which basically makes it a screen worth of whip yeah. in terms of how far you can dash and the cooldown reduction on it as well. That makes a level 20 Tyrael absolutely terrifying because you are always under threat. doesn't matter how far in the back line you are. That is definitely correct. I mean, you could really see the late game value. And speaking of late game value, Tetcher, chicken on that tracer. Managed to he stay alive all the time. I don't think he died a single time. So he have he his not. stacks there, his untouchable stacks. He probably had like 10, 11-ish towards the end of the game. Uh, so oh, really, yeah. really well done on his part as well. And just minor individual mistakes by the A-team here and there, like Decker getting caught, for example, um, them not really focusing well. Also in the late game, I don't know why they had Murden and Phoenix in that top temple, just to threaten one Leoric who could have kited them until the end of time. So without the main tank, without the Phoenix, there was nothing for them to hold this last onslaught. It's very true. It was an interesting style to see them moving in like that with that... Uh... Like you mentioned it, I really thought it was going to be like a group up team fight with a sanctification and the shields mm. from the Tyrael to empower that tracer and treat it like a double support comp where they just sort of played around the uh, play around the sustain of their composition. I did not expect them to go full aggro. I'm very <laughs> happy they did because it worked really, really well. But the A team, their composition, it had moments of brilliance, but after a while, they just got out sustained and mm. out leveled. And once again, we see one of the biggest issues, probably the only big flaw that Decker Kane suffers from, not having a cleanse, right? There, When you have a Rhaegar, an Uther, or even a Malfurion on the enemy team, yeah. judgment almost becomes irrelevant, right? Because there's always that cleanse, there's always that burst protection that comes with it. But Decker Kane, if he gets stunned himself at that point, like, he is such a squishy and helpless target. That's two games in a row. That we've seen a Deckard Kane and seen it countered by point and click CC. The Hunt Hinterland that into correct. Judgment, correct. Uh, judgment Reptire. It, China might have uh, found the counter to the Deckard Kane, which seems so prevalent these days. And it's just play more aggressive. And it's working out for them pretty yeah. well so far. And what is China best at? What do they do uh, better than most other regions, actually? That is team fighting, uh, right? Aggression. Aggression and team fighting, exactly, Tetra. So, although it's debatable how strong China as an overall region is right now, you know, given their weaknesses in terms of uh, map awareness and rotations and macro play, you can definitely take some input from those team fights how to counter specific heroes, because that's definitely something that China is really good at. And the Terrial aggression, the Illidan hunt aggression against the Decker Kane times and times again, as you said it, could definitely be a cute little thing to watch out for, at least for other Chinese teams and yeah. maybe teams from other regions abroad as well. RPG, they they've uh, they are the ones to do it twice now. They've figured out the Deckard Kane, at least. Maybe <laughs> it's time to start drafting cleanse. Please, teams. But for now, game one going over to RPG, that guarantees them at minimum mm. a total of seven points on the table. Not enough to catch up to anyone, but if they win this next one, they're going to get themselves nine points. That puts them tied with Team Nut and KT. And Tetra, we mentioned it during the draft, right? And Uther could have maybe been so good there for the A-team. Of course, it remains to be seen whether um, Tyrael still would have gone Judgment in the first place, right? If the Uther was locked in. But still, an Uther in that case could have been the saving grace many a time. Quite possibly. Even the Rhaegar. It could have even been a Rhaegar. maybe even bit of Bloodlust comp. We already talked about it. You still get cleanse. But obviously, the support was the one being targeted. Uther would have been the one that made the most sense in that case, because he's one of the only supports who can actually self-ult. Mm. So a self-define shield could have been the saving uh, the saving move there, at least for the support player. But it's a big map. It is, we have some extended team fights. Uther has severe mana issues still yeah. to this day. So, Did you also get a short little loading circle? Or was it just no. me? 
Was it just me? Uh, I'm fine. You were a little bit ahead of me, so let's just quickly okay. recheck time. Let's, let's just resync anyways while we're waiting for the next okay. graph to go down. 5.85. Uh, 5.85. Man, you're, you're to six. fast today. Yeah, to 6. 5.8 5, 5. to 6. I'm sitting at 6.17, so that should work out, my friend. Close enough! As we are heading to RPG 